All right, I'm happy to introduce our 2020 Mercury four-stroke 15 horsepower EFI electronic fuel injection engine. Check out this bad boy. The supply is tight and the demand is wild. So there's a six month waiting list on, on one of these. Historically, we've always had Yamaha. We started with a six horsepower Yamaha and we've uh, we upgraded to a nine nine Yamaha. And uh, we had a decision when we decided to upgrade to the 15 horsepower whether they go with the Yamaha or the, the Mercury. And as you can see, we went with the Mercury for several reasons. One is this engine was redesigned in 2017. So it's newer technology. It's, it's been uh, tried for a few years. It is an electronic fuel injection engine. So no more carbureted, no more pulling out the, uh, the carburetor um, to choke it. And uh, you know, it's a little bit lighter weight of an engine. It's made by Tohatsu actually. Uh, with a uh, mercury stamp but man the reviews have been pretty good so we're excited about uh, trying this one out really wanted a 15 horsepower for this in for this boat to go a little bit faster the 99 topped out about 13 miles an hour so we anticipate this one will go about uh, 20 25 miles per hour a couple unique features on here Back here in the back, there's actually a little bit of uh, a grip, and you can see it if you check it up there, where you can easily grab it, and it's like a finger web, um, so it's pretty pretty unique. You can also adjust the yoke to whatever side you want it to go on. So a redesigned yoke, um, and uh, it's gotten a lot of uh, a lot of accolades. Let me show you the operation of it. We actually are bringing over our three and a half gallon Mueller fuel tank. It's an external cell. We um, we opted to uh, use the old one. Mercury actually gives you a, a fuel tank right here uh, for free with it. Yamaha does not, so it's a unique, unique, um, unique in the fact that Mercury does that. Let me show you the the contraption to to uh, tie in the fuel line. This is it, just like plugging it in here. And you want it to snap. You want to push push the lever right there, and then it, and then it'll click click in. You feel it click. Pull it out, and it's not going anywhere. So. One thing about this engine, there's a, a bar here that you can t loosen. When you're operating it, you want it, you want this bar to be to the to the left. So this allows you to steer easily. When you're trailing it, you don't want the engine going back and forth. So you actually pull this bar, center it more to to the right, and now it's not going to move when you're trailing it. So it's really helpful. We'll pull it out for a second. Make it. Movable. Now to lift the engine up, you want to actually, there's a bar here. You want to pull the end, this bar down towards the water and then you can, you can pull it up. Whatever degree you want to go up. Now when you want to pull the engine down, same thing, you just you pull it up and it goes down just like that. So you're going to pull it up and then it will, it will uh, fall back down and then it's, it's, it, it's in the position. You can also adjust the pins. We have trim tabs on this boat so we probably won't need to do that. Here's the pin here and adjust the position and that you just, you'll pull the, you'll push the pin towards towards over here and you can adjust it to whatever lever you want to go to pretty unique for this engine actually you have the opportunity to flush it two ways one is with the traditional earmuffs or you can also d directly tie it into the engine here it actually feels a little more robust than the Yamaha the Yamaha was just on the uh, on a little hose that connected it I like this a lot better Just like that. It's important to make sure whenever you use a 
small outboard engine that you have it tied down. We use these emergency clamps, just some couple stainless steel uh, carabiners. And um, you know, this is pretty tight on, on, on there. So you want to make sure that the engine doesn't fall off. Let's pop the hood and I'll show you what's underneath here. Now this engine actually has a fuel filter here, whereas the Yamaha does not. They do not recommend you run a separate fuel filter um, to your gas tank. This is more than sufficient. If you ever get in a situation where you have bad fuel, you can uh, you can basically drain it from there. I'll also note that we recommend using ethanol-free gas. We use the boat all the time, but ethanol-free gas really prevents you from having engine problems. You know, ethanol fuel will break down quicker. And if you're not using your boat, and you if you you know we we boat year-round that we're in considering we're in Florida, but uh, we still use ethanol-free. And knowing that the um, the cost of ethanol free for this, you know, to operate this boat is minimal. It's highly recommended uh, to do it. Another unique factor about this engine is the, the Yamaha, um, another fa unique factor about this engine is you only need to bring it in every 100 hours of service. Whereas the Yamaha, they actually want you to bring it in after the first 20 hours of, uh, of service, of operating use. You can see here, Here's the maintenance schedule for it. Every 100, every 100 hours or yearly, they want you to do engine oil, filter, lower uh, gear case, which is the lower unit. That's the oil for the lower unit. Um, and then every 300 hours or three years of service, they want you to do a water pump and the spark plug. And uh, additionally, they want you to lubricate the points. So really easy. I'll actually have the dealer do it just to keep it simple. But uh, you can see over here, this is a manual. A manual we didn't opt for the electric the electric our option actually has the ability to pull start it as well but uh, we went with this just for the lighter weight and ease of use and you can see there this engine actually was made in 2020 it's 105 pounds that was another factor in us going with the mercury is lighter weight than the Yamaha so now let me show you how to put it, this cut cowling back on. Line up the front. You want to kind of pivot the front. Pivot it because there's a there's a latch in the front. And pull it down just like that. And you can see it's lined up really well, really tight. Pull it up here. Nothing's going. Now this engine actually comes with a three year standard warranty. But we opted for the platinum protection. So the platinum protection, we went for an th extra three years. And it, you, can, you have the option of doing the gold protection or the platinum pr protection. The, the, the platinum protection is um, more, more significant, covers a lot more things as you can tell. Um, for this engine, the platinum protection out the door with taxes was like 225 for an extra three years. So we have six years of coverage. So the original three plus an additional three uh, with this. This is for recreational use. But uh, it's kind of a no brainer for us. We could have actually done an extra two years on top of the, the six years. And that was four hundred dollars, four fifty. We figured that was a little too much. Now, because this is a brand new engine, we need to follow the braking procedure, which is very important. As I mentioned before, you want to use ethanol free, but uh, here you have the engine braking procedure. The first hour of operation, run the engine at varied throttle settings for up to two thousand RPMs, or approximately half throttle. For the second hour of operation, run the engine at very throttled for up to 3,000 or three quarters uh, throttle. And uh, you can run full throttle for approximately one minute every 10 minutes. So 10% of the time you can run it at a full throttle. 
And then the next eight hours of operation, you want to avoid continuous operation at full throttle for more than five minutes at a time. So vary the speed. I like to be a little more careful on this. I always take a you know, follow it to the T. Um, you, you know, this is an expensive investment. So we recommend uh, just really, you know, starting it out right and, and following the procedure. Like I said, you don't need to do a 20 hour service, which is unique. A lot of outboards will require the 20 hours. Um, this one does not. And uh, let's go ahead and I'll get it set up to, to start it up. So we are using the earmuffs, traditional ones. I'm just gonna slide these on over the port. You wanna make sure you have a lot of flow. So you can see we have plenty of water flow. And you could do it, you know, this is one way or the other way is just to tie it directly in. You want to make sure your boat is in neutral at all times. So this is the throttle here. I think I also mentioned you can move the yoke to however you want to feel it. Uh, if you want to put it like at an off degree, you can do that and move it either way. So whenever you put it up like this, you have this little lever here. This lever, you pull it down and you can see it goes on both sides. So I just want to show you also right here, there's an engine low oil light. So this, this engine takes a little bit over a quart, I believe. Uh, the dealer actually set it up. He, he put in, uh, I think it was a little bit over a quart, but you want to make sure that, but if your engine were to have low oil, this light here will beep. So we're in neutral, everything's clear. Let me go ahead and pull it and I'll start it for you guys. Electronic fuel injection should be really easy to, to, uh, to start. Check here, it's also peeing properly. Just to make sure that you don't have um, overheating issues. Cool the engine. When you're ready to shut it off there's a kill switch right here so you just push that down get, there's also a a kill switch here that you can tie to your body it's a little a little beefier switch right here and they also give you a spare one of these kill switches so in the event that you lose this one it falls off there's one right here that they tuck right here which is unique that guy right there I should also point out, like before you start it, you know, we have a uh, fuel bulb. You want to run, you know, basically pump it a few times. Make sure you have constant fuel. Check to make sure you don't have any fuel leakage here as well, and we're good. I'll show you one other thing on this side too. Here's the anoid, the zinc right here to keep. Uh, So we, we boat in salt water primarily, so it's imperative that every time you take out this engine, you flush it, and you flush it well. According to the manual, it says do not you know, rev up the engine when flushing it, so we're just gonna let it flush. Typically, I'll let it flush, flush anywhere from three to five, six minutes, and uh, you know, this is a good preventative maintenance if you wanna do. Once you're, when you're ready to shut it down, all you're gonna do, so we'll come over here, lower this, but all you're gonna do is press this button right here. And there you go, she's dead. I'll show you one more pull, show you how easy it is. It's gonna rev up a little bit, and then it's gonna idle down. And this is a redfish trout 
flounder fishing machine. So we'll tell you next time about our boat setup and, and how we like to fish. And, and uh, you know, really it's, it's fun to get out on the water even though it's not that expensive. You know, with the 9.9, we would burn three quarters of a gallon uh, for every trip. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.